I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how long you've been on the planet. There are seasons in your life where you might say, this is it. You know, we used to laugh at Fred Sanford and, honey, it is good. I'm coming home. Some of y'all used to watch Sanford and Son, but sometimes we act that way in our spirits. Lord, that's it. Lord, take me now. This is it. This is the big one, right? Sometimes we, we feel that way. After a long week of wrestling with God, I stopped by on assignment. I'm just on assignment to remind us all that a truth that I relearned recently, and that is what you have is more than enough to move you from where you are to where God has destined you to be. All of all you have to do, Cornerstone, and those viewing at home, is to make up with mind, make up in your mind to go with God with what I already have. With what I already have, with what I've already got. I know that sometimes it seems like you can't make it. Sometimes it feels like you can't take one step. Or when you take one step forward, you'll push two steps backwards. But I dare you to trust God and trust what he has given to you. The reality is this, Cornerstone, family and friends, is that God has already placed what you need in your possession. I, 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 I got to remind this of you. Some of you are looking for something for your, I, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, I'm going to do something in 2021. I, I'm looking for this. But the reality is that God has already placed in your possession what you need to get you to where he desires you to be. You already have it. Already have it. It's already in your house. There's no need for you to stress yourself out. No need to worry yourself into a depression. Just remember to go with what you already have. God has already promised to supply you with every need. Know that our God is a good shepherd, okay? When we sing that song, he's a good God, that's just who he is. There is no shadow of turning. God is good. His natural attribute is that he is love. He can't be anything other than good. So he is the good shepherd. That means that everything I need is already at my disposal. Maybe I'm preaching to myself, but some of y'all ain't getting it yet. Maybe everything I need to engage life's problems with God's plan and move forward to receive his promise for my life is already in my possession. I ain't got to make another book. I ain't got to make another phone call. And then I got to take another class. I already have in my possession what I need uh, 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 to deal or what I need to fulfill God's plan and move forward and receive his promises in my life. And, and in this morning's text, I'm going to show you something. We, we see that we see that, that there's this, this widow here. And then uh, uh, she needed some stuff, right? She needed some things, right? Uh, life's challenges um, uh, uh, we're, we're kind of coming down on her, but the prophet tells you, tells her, you already have what you need. Now watch the text. It's in 2 Kings 4, 1 7. We see trouble. This is how I teach young preachers to write sermons. Every sermon's four pages. Let me help you out. There's trouble in the Bible. Then you line it up with trouble in the world. Then there's solution in the Bible and solution for the world. Okay? So we're going to start off with the trouble in the Bible. There's trouble. We're joined with the prophet Elisha. He's talking with the woman who is recently widowed. She's a widowed mother of two young children, right? Her husband dies, right? Her husband had been a prophet just like Elisha, but now he's dead. Yes, Christians die. Yes, followers of Christ die. Right? But he was a prophet, and he had to be a prophet like Elisha, and he's dead, and she's left to raise two sons on her own, right? And to add up to that burden of grief, she has recently discovered that she is bankrupt. She recently discovered she's bankrupt. She has used up all the insurance money. She has sold all the household assets, trying to raise enough money to keep the creditors at bay. But the problem is, no matter what she does, it's just not enough. She is overwhelmed. She is a former first lady. She is a former wife of a preacher. This is a Christian home. This is a God-fearing home. And she is left bankrupt and feeling like it's just not enough. So believers, at the sound of my voice, don't you ever think that serving God is all pie in the sky. There will be moments 
where you're going to feel like you don't have enough, that you are not enough, so that God is able to work out what we call miracles in our lives. Lord, why am I here? Because I want to show you something about myself. I want to show you the side of me you've never seen before. That's why you're here. So here she is, insurance ran out, proceeds sold, all the household assets are gone. She had a big yard sale. There's nothing left. There's nothing enough for the creditors, right? And the problem is it's just not enough. And she's overwhelmed by the vicissitudes of life. She is stunned. She is flabbergasted. She's astonished by her troubles. Her husband is dead, and she is broke. We can relate, can we? Life has all sorts of challenges. Even as a believer, her spouse is gone. He was a major source of financial security to her and her boys and he is gone and this still happens to believers their spouses die spouses leave believers get divorces right we might even some some believers even put their spouses out glory to god hallelujah right they even put them out but nevertheless nevertheless life can change drastically even in the life of a believer life can change drastically in the life of a believer. Yes. Bill Collector told her, Reverend Dallin, Bill Collector told her and said, listen, if you don't pay the debt and fool about the first in the month, we're going to take your two children and sell them into slavery. Yes. Which was perfectly legal at the time. Oh, yes. You know how some of y'all hide y'all cars from the repo man? <laughs> She's trying to hide her sons from the repo man. But that was perfectly legal. It was perfectly legal for them to come and sell her sons into slavery. And, 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 and the reason why they did it, because they used the proceeds from the sale to pay off the remainder of the debt that she had. It was an action at that time in culture that was perfectly legal in that culture, in the culture of this text. It was perfectly legal for them to come sell your children to pay off a debt that you could not pay. In other words, some children found themselves in slavery because of the foolishness of their parents. So, should I stay there for a minute? Should I stay there? Some of y'all kids is paying the price for your foolishness. Some of us have paid the foolishness for our parents' stuff. And, and I'm telling you, you die. Ah, never mind. Let me go back to my text. But that's what the culture of the day, and it's still happening spiritually today. Yeah. Stop putting the phone in the baby's name. <laughs> uh, stop it. Stop it. Six years old got bad credit. Cut it out. Stop it. Don't be ashamed of yourself. Anyhow, she's at the end of her rope, man. She feels inadequate to the challenges of life. She makes her way down to Elisha. Elisha listens patiently and she tells her the story. And when he, she's finished, and as he looks her in the eyes, I can speculate him saying, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, I, I don't have any influence with the bank. I don't, I, I don't have any influence with the, the, the creditor. Um, and she says, so, so you know, what, what, he says to her, what, what, what do you want me to do? I, I can't pay off the debt myself. My, my hands are lifted. Or my hands are tied. I'm sorry. I can't lift that debt. I can't lift that debt. I, I, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. And I can imagine her picking up her pocketbook and she prepares to leave. And then Elisha gets her an inspired insight from God, a God-given insight, and asks her a question that would change her life. He has to say, wait a minute, ma'am. What do you have in the house? Wait a minute. What do you have in the house? He, he, he asked her with hope, and, and the widow replies, I have nothing in the house save a jar of oil. And so begins the miracle story that reminds us that even when life leaves you feeling inadequate and overwhelmed, you ought to remember to go with what you got. Widow, which end? Got to come get her kids. The widow in our text follows Elijah's instruction and in doing so discovers that what she needs is already in the house. Yes, yeah, she's got a problem, but God has a plan. Yes, yeah, you have a problem, but God has a plan. Right? She has an issue, but God has a solution. You too have an issue, 
But God has a solution. She has a setback. But God is setting her up for a comeback. Some of you have been set back, but God is still setting you up. Will you come back? Watch the text. What do you have in the house? Nothing, save the jar of oil, which is translated except. E X C E C E X, you know what I'm saying? E X E C E T, right? Except, right? I, I played Scrabble with my wife the other day. She killed me. <laughs> but I promise you I can spell. Who puts down, who puts down, let me, let me, I'll come back. Who puts down unleavened? On Scrabble. <laughs> I mean, I knew the word. I put down Uno, she threw it off the board. <laughs> Except the jar of oil. That's all she says, right? I got nothing except the jar of oil. And you've got to know that there is something in that word except. All God needs is what you have. All God needs is your accept, and he can work with that. Lord, all I have is it. Lord, that's all I got. That's all I need to work with. That thing that you forgot about, that thing that you ain't thinking about, that's all I need to work with. had sold everything that she owned except for a little jar of oil. Why? Who, who, who would want a jar of oil? Who would want that? Because if, if it, listen, if it had street value, she would have sold it. Am I right about it? She would have sold it. Ladies, y'all know as soon as you be the breakup with a man or he leave you or he die, y'all sell all this stuff. That ain't a thing of value. Be telling people, come on, we look in the closet. <laughs> Ryan, please get there before anybody else gets there. <laughs> she would have sold it if had any street value. But it didn't. She said, all I have is this jar of oil. Then Elijah, or Elisha, discloses the plan of God. He says, go outside, and I want you to borrow as many vessels as you can from your neighbors. Then go home and pour the oil from your jar into the borrowed vessels, and when each of them is filled, set them aside and report back to me. She had a problem, an overwhelming problem, but God had a plan. You have a problem, an overwhelming problem, but God has a plan. All she has to do is follow God's plan, and she will realize God's promise. Now, I have to give her credit because most of us would have left, went home and did nothing and said, where's God? She followed the prophet's instructions. She followed the plan. When you follow God's plan, you will receive God's promise. Can I tell somebody this morning, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you, but it begins by deciding to go with what you've got and following God's plan. So it started with this jar of oil that the woman in our text already has in the house. What is it about this jar of oil, Minister Brown, that she has in the house? If we were to take a little trip to the original language of the text, it helps answer that question. The Hebrew understanding makes it clear that both the jar and the oil were special. The jar is the Hebrew word sook, right? A word used only one time in the Old Testament, which is formed from the root meaning to anoint. Y'all missed it. The vessel contained holy anointing oil. You know, it's that special mixture of oil and spices. That recipe was set forth in Exodus chapter 30. I don't have the time to go into the recipe, but read Exodus chapter 30 around verse 23 for that recipe and that special anointing oil. And that's all she had in the house. She couldn't sell that. It was anointing oil. Can't nobody do nothing with that. The holy anointing oil was to be used solely and exclusively by the priest as a part of worship. And, and please know that under the Old Testament law, the misuse of the sacred oil was punished by death. Nobody wanted to be bothered with that oil. Nobody wanted to be bothered with that, right? This widow had a little jar of holy <laughs> anointing oil. Question is, where did it come from? Remember, only priests could have had it or used it. And so her deceased husband had to be a priest. We knew that, right? He was a priest or a preacher or a pastor, whatever he was. Remember, her husband was a prophet. That's why she went to see Elisha in the first place. So in order for him to have a jar of anointing oil, her husband had also had to be a priest, somebody holy, right? The woman had sold everything she owned except for this little jar of anointing oil. 
As desperate as the situation was, she could have sold the oil, except that it was too little in quantity to be of any value, and her creditor wouldn't have taken it anyway because the creditor had no use for a sacred anointing oil. The truth of the matter is that she didn't have much oil, and what she had was practically worth it, worthless. So she fought. So she started anyway. She stashed it away. She stashed it away. So she started. She wanted, wanted to hear the prophet. She said, okay, I'm going to go get it. It was a keepsake. Perhaps a reminder of her husband's priestly legacy. The little jar of oil was all that she had. And yet with God, it was more than enough. <laughs> Don't miss this. Don't miss it. I know you might be getting caught up in the story, but there's so many parts of the story you cannot miss. What the woman needed to confront the challenges that she was facing was already in her possession. It's in the house. All she needed was to go to God with what she already had. Holy Spirit, help me make this live. Help me with this Holy Spirit so they get what I'm saying. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Like this widow, you have a problem. But God already has a plan that will lead you to his promise. This is the trouble in the world part of the sermon. Her path, like your path to victory in the face of overwhelming odds, begins when she takes inventory of what she already has. Notice Elisha does not, does not ask about what she once had. Y'all, 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 y'all listening. Uh, he, don't, he, don't, he don't ask her. He said, what do you have in the house? Listen, he used, he, the, the verb tense matters. Here's the question posed by the prophet. He asked her, what do you have? He didn't ask, what did you have? He asked, what do you have? And God is asking you, what do you have? He is reminding her and he's reminding us today that your past is not relevant when it comes to the future that God has planned.
The things that you lost. So stop running behind people. Stop running behind things. That stuff is gone. It's gone. Let it stay gone. What you need is already in your possession. What you need is already in your house. What the widow lost was immaterial. What matters is what she has now. After the death, after the divorce, after the layoff, after the sickness, what do you have in your house? Because here's the thing. You still got something. How do I know? Because the Lord never leaves us with nothing. The Lord never leaves us with nothing. So, somebody say, I've got something. Say it like you did. I got something. I ain't got what I wanted. I ain't got what I used to have. I got something. I got something. For all that she's been through, you see through the lens of this text. That what she had in the house was enough to see her through. The spiritual principle that God is trying to get us to embrace is this. That's, that's the spiritual principle. He said, listen, what, what you have is enough for me to bless you. And that's the beauty of God's love and care for us. God makes certain that we have what we need. If you need it, God's got it. In fact, in your, if you're in a relationship with God, you're already set up. You're already set up. If you're in a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, you're already set up. Keep telling you, you can't avoid the Jesus factor. You can't avoid it. If I'm in a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I'm already set up. God had already supplied everything that the woman needed, even in the aftermath of her husband's death and her family falling into financial ruin. None of this surprised God. God had already set up. You got to see the picture. Her husband's dead. Bill collectors are calling. It's like it's no way out. Everything she had counted on is out the window. Now her sons are about to be repoed, right? It's a, it's a situation that's, that's dire. And yet God has everything she needs for her to make it through. And what I'm trying to help you see in, in this message is the miracle of the text. If you go into 2021 with what you have, you will discover that it's everything that you already, that's everything that you ever need. It begins by taking inventory, by pausing to think about what God has given you. Have you ever taken inventory? Have you ever thought about what God has given you? What do we always Pray to God and cry about what we lost. Come on. Never once did Elijah say, focus on what you lost. Come on. She begins to take inventory. And so I'm asking you, it takes, by, by pausing to think about what God has given you, pray, listen, 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 listen. She had anointing oil. In other words, catch this, she had an anointing on her life. Jeanette, right? Anybody listen to my voice? She had an anointing on her life, right? She had an anointing, right? And, and, and she didn't voluntarily give it away, and she didn't sell it. You see, I said this before. A young man and I were talking this week. He was, uh, he and I became very close. He said, you know what, Pastor Graves? I have discovered that nobody cares. Everybody likes when I talk like a Christian, but everybody gets mad when I live like one. That's the truth when it comes to you and I. Everybody loves when you talk like a Christian, but those, there are some people who will hate it if you begin to live like one. Now, what she didn't do, and what some of us do is, we give away or we sell the anointing. We make this thing plain. Oh, notice it was her anointing oil that saved her. Am I doing all right, honey? It's anointing oil that saved her. We give our anointing away, right? We give the anointing oil away. When you begin to act like a Christian and live like, nobody cares what you're saying. When you begin to live like a Christian, right, people begin to hate it. And so what we do is we begin to give our anointing away. And you can get every, every time you willfully walk outside of the will of God for your life, guess what you give away? A little bit of your anointing. Every time you violate knowingly a biblical principle, guess what you give away? A little bit of your anointing. Guess what saved her? The anointing. Guess what you give away? The anointing. You see where I'm going here? You have to protect the anointing oil at all costs. I can't do that now because I'll lose my anointing. I can't go there, Anthony, because I'll lose my anointing. I can't have that attitude because I lose my anointing. Where my single people at? Where my single Christians? I said it earlier today. Lady 
means you're going to tell that man, I can't sleep with you because I'll lose my anointing. Heaven's going to tell that girl, I ain't sleeping with you because I'll lose my anointing. I'm losing my anointing for with you. I got to protect my anointing. Why? Because eventually my anointing will save my whole house. My anointing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got to get this thing. You got to start living like a Christian. You got to tell somebody, no, 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 and zip. No, it's my anointing that I'm protecting. I ain't worried about your feelings. I'm protecting my anointing. It's my anointing. And you want to protect your anointing. It's your anointing that'll save your life. Don't you think otherwise? Stop giving your anointing. Let young ladies to every guy that smile at you. Fellas, stop giving your anointing to every little, little Instagram model that DM you. Stop giving your anointing to her. Huh? Husbands and wives, stop giving your anointing when God's trying to anoint you in your finances. Stop increasing everything else but not increasing your giving. giving away a little bit of your anointing. Every time you step outside the will of God, you're losing your anointing. Pay attention to the text. It was the anointing oil that saved her. Wasn't her education. No white knight. Wasn't no white knight. Wasn't no princess. It was an anointing oil that saved her. And some of you, the only way you're going to get really saved from the distress that you're in at 21 is start standing on and applying and saving the anointing oil that God has placed in your life through a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch how mad folks get when you tell them, I'm no longer talking like a Christian, I'm going to live like one. Amen. You'll be able to tell who's really on Christ's side. But anyway, right, look at this right here, right? Look at this, right? And so, so, you know, everybody likes when you talk like a Christian, but they don't like when you decide to live like one. If your friends and your family care for you just a little bit, they will not ask you to do or be involved in anything that jeopardizes your anointing oil. Anybody who asks you to jeopardize your anointing oil does not love you like they say they love you. Can I say it again? Because some of you are even asking people. Some of you are the askers. Some of you are asking people. The Lord will forgive us. He may, but I'm going to lose my anointing oil. Next time you feel inadequate, like you don't have what you need, ask yourself the question that Elisha asked a woman in the text. The woman in the text took inventory and discovered that she had a little jar of anointing oil. That's all she needed. First, she had to take inventory. And she had to investigate, right? Because he said in verse 3, go outside and borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not just a few. All right? You discovered your anointing, right? And he discovered that gift, anointing, that God has over your life. And now he tells her, go start a relationship. <laughs> he says, go to your neighbors. Ask to borrow empty vessels, not just a few. The woman actually had to go out and talk to her name, neighbors. Today we call this therapy. <laughs> Today y'all write big checks to therapists. And Elijah says, go out and talk to your neighbors. Ask them for their empty vessels. Now you know, they just ain't giving right up. Somebody said, what you need my pot for? <laughs> I have the right to ask. You know why I'm here? It's my pot. So I can ask. It's like when people ask you for money. Don't be afraid to ask them for what? Make them lie. <laughs> it's your money. They ain't work for it, they borrow it. Matter of fact, they ain't even borrow it because you ain't never gonna see it again. They ain't work for it, so you can ask them. Yeah, that's what you want my money for. And I'll decide whether I want to give it to that cause. And so she asked, and she had a relationship. She had an anointing oil. She still went out there. She didn't say, she didn't do what we do. This is just me and my son's problem. My little circle. 
Nobody's going to violate my circle. She would have been dead and died. Yeah. She had to go out and ask. She had to go out and ask for this oil, right? I mean, she had to go out and ask for these pots, right? She talks to her neighbors. It forces her. This is what it does ultimately. It forces her to be a participant in her deliverance. It forces her to participate. That thing that you're praying for, God says, I'm going to force you to participate in it. Don't just sit there and ask me to deliver you and you don't participate. This forces her participation in the event. Yeah. So if your healing is at the doctor's office, go! Your healing is changing your diet, change it. If your healing is dumping most of the people in your phone and ghosting people, <laughs> ghost. <laughs> ghost. <laughs> you got to participate. <laughs> you worry about people's feelings and you up here dying. Navy, right? I think you were too Bill and, and Pepe on service. When they taught us to, 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 um, to uh, save a drowning person, remember you were swimming. They said if the drowning person starts to drown you, right. kick them off. <laughs> you ain't killing both of us. <laughs> See, I said that, both of us. You ain't killing both of us. <laughs> but what do we do in the name of Jesus? <laughs> we try to save people. Yeah. And because we ain't strong enough to save them, guess what? We drown both of us. We drown. She had to go talk to her neighbors. She had to put it to work. It made her look crazy. Can you imagine how crazy she looked, y'all? Yes, come on. She just so you just had a baby art sale. Didn't you just sell all the pots you had some people? <laughs> Did you not just sell all those pots and now you asking me for them? She looks crazy. Yeah. See, when you're trusting God to the outside world, you will go crazy. But she's seeking deliverance. Her boy's life, her life is at stake. She looks crazy. This order made her look crazy. And I know one of her neighbors said, girl, and this is, this is another crazy point she looked at, right? Somebody said, girl, you ain't even got cooking oil. You got an oil anymore. Yeah. How are you making a cake with an oil no you ain't got cooking oil. You should ask me for oil. No, I'm asking for the pot. Don't worry about what I got. I gotta use what I got. I just need the pot. Right. <laughs> so somebody said, girl, you, 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 it made her look crazy. But that's all right. You know why? Because faith in God will make you look crazy. Yeah. Am I right, darling? Am I right? Let me, let me, let me call the roll. Come here, Esther. Esther said, brazen told me if I showed up without being called, then the king would kill me. But I said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king. Come here, David. David said, Graves, they said I was too young. But I said, just give me five smooth stones and a slingshot. That's all I need to slay the offender of the power of Israel. Come here, groom at the wedding party and the wedding at Cana. Then the groom said, Graves, I ran out of wine. He told me to fill some old crack pots with water. And when I served it, it was the finest wine the world had ever tasted. Faith in God will make you look crazy. Using what you have will make you look crazy. But God is doing something, Sharon. God is doing something. You see, when she did, she discovered that they had some empty jars. Remember, remember this woman who, who had a little, a little jar of sacred anointing oil in her possession, the widow of a priest, right? And she did what she had to do. And following the plan, and in order to realize God's promise, she had to go and investigate to fill out, to, to find out the one thing she had in her house that she had overlooked, which was actually quite valuable. Some of you are looking over something that God has placed inside you, and it's really quite valuable. Some of you are looking past because, because you're so busy trying to be what your mom wanted you to be. So busy trying to be what your daddy wanted you to be. So busy trying to be what your spouse or what society or what culture wants you to be that you've looked over what God has given you. And it's that one thing that will not only save you, but save your entire family. But you look over it. 
you don't think that ability means anything. But God gave you that ability because it means something. Matter of fact, that ability that God gave you that you are overlooking, guess what? That's the one thing that will save you, right? Talk to believers now. So she needed it, right? But but she didn't, she, she, she had what she had in the house, but she didn't value it. And some of us do that. And so God had to show her that he would, if she would just go with what she had and what she already got, he would multiply. So some of us have what we need to make it. I'm hurrying to my clothes, but we missed the opportunity to see God multiply it because we won't put it to use in the way that God designated it to be used. Watch the text. The woman only had a little, a little oil in a jar to begin with. It was all she needed, but she needed to put into work according to God's instructions. So what you have ought to be put into work according to God's instructions. I can't, I gotta tell you the truth. It can't be put into play according to anybody else's instructions. It has to be put into play according to God's instructions, not according to man's opinion. She had enough to make a difference. So she started out with a little bit. She started out every now and then with a small jar of oil. It was too little to be of use of anyone's purpose, but she yielded it to God's plan. Look what happens. If you want to see God do the miraculous with what he has given you, you have to take what he has given. You have to take inventory. You have to know what God has given you and you have to give it back to God. You have to, not only this, investigate who needs what you have and then the next step in the plan is to employ it. Engage, in other words, participate in the plan. Elisha says this, he says, now listen, you got all the vessels, everybody around here is hungry. Now, once you get all the pots, go in and shut the door. I can't ignore this part right here. Shut the door behind you. Shut the door in on you and your children while you're participating. You're not shutting people out. You're just getting the participation. You know, you're, you're not concentrating on what God. Start pouring into all these vessels. For some of you, that means start practicing like you are. Start studying like you are. Start living like you are. Start putting into practice everything that God has given you. And when each of them is full, set it aside. And when the vessels were full, the oil stopped flowing. God will always give you just enough for what you need. What do you mean employ the plan of God? In other words, you've got to put in the work. What did Elijah tell the woman to do once she completed the investigation, got her hands dirty, put in the work, go in and shut the door and start pouring? I'm not going to help you, Elijah said. You start pouring. Listen, sometimes you've got to shut the door. You've got to leave the negativity outside. Shut the door and leave the naysayers to themselves. Shut the door and hear the word of the Lord, what the word of the Lord is saying to you. If we want to experience the blessing of God, sometimes we need to learn how to shut the door. I said it the other day. Sometimes you need to learn how to embrace the boredom. Embrace the boredom. Shut the door. Get off your phone. Shut the door. Turn off your notifications. Matter of fact, put it in another room. Don't even set the alarm. I have shut the door. I have started getting to getting and working on what God has called me to work on. When she came out, right, she came and told the man of God what happened. He said, now this. Now go sell and pay all your debt. Let me say this to my well-meaning Christians. Stop giving away your services in the name of Jesus. So you missed that. Well, Pastor, shouldn't you give it away? She sold the cakes. She, it, 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 it's okay to be a Christian entrepreneur. She had a price, David Asaga. And she sold it. Y'all, it's still some of y'all. Some, some of y'all been lied to so long that the church should give everything away. That Christians should give everything away. Elijah said, "Elijah said, don't you give a blessed thing away? You better sell it. You better sell it. That'll save your family." And so she sells it. She uses the anointing. She does what God calls her to do, and she sells it right. And it saves. It saves her right. It saves her in a tough time. She paid all of her debts. Not just a little debt, she paid all of her debt. So I just stopped by to remind you that in the tough places of life, you can make it because you're never alone. In the tough places of life, you got to use what you got. The songwriter said, I've seen the lightning flash and I've heard the thunder roll. I've got sense breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul, but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. In fact, I heard Hebrews 13, 5 said that he promised never, 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 never to leave me. 
me alone. This is the presence of the Lord. It's a reminder of his promise that he will supply everything that you need. You got to learn to follow God's plan and experience the promises of God. Because he won't leave you. Stop thinking that, that it's, it's, it's the, 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 the more in poverty you are, the more Christian-like you are. No, no, no. That's not the way it goes. He won't leave you. He'll be right there to guide you. You've got to hold on. You've got to hold out. God will hold you up if you hold on and hold out. Don't break down. Just go with what you got. Just go with what you have. What do you have? Well, if you ain't got nothing else, you've got Jesus, and he will see you through. So I want to to say, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know what thus saith the Lord. And I'm so glad that I've learned to trust him. I'm so glad that I've learned to trust this precious Jesus, this Savior, this friend. I know that thou art with me and you will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I come to even love him more. Because when all else says, when all else is gone, you got a little jar of oil. I know you do. I know all of you got a little jar of oil. And God's presence will see you through. Just go with what you got. You got to trust Jesus with what you got. See, when I trust Jesus with what I got, his hands make all the difference. I can throw a football, but a football thrown at the hands of Tom Brady makes a big difference. I can hold a basketball. But a basketball in my hands and a basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan is something completely different. And so I can live my life, but my life in the hands of Jesus Christ is something completely different. Y'all know who he is. It's the first of the year. Y'all know y'all gonna sit there while I call the Lord. He's the Almighty One. That's who Jesus is. He's the Alpha and Omega. That's who he is. He's the Advocate. That's who he is. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. That's who he is. He is the final of all of That's who he is. He is the bread of life. That's who he is. He is the beloved son, the bridegroom, the chief cornerstone, the deliverer. He's faithful and true. He's the good shepherd. That's who he is. And you ought to give God some praise.